Afternoon everybody, Christian here. I want to share some things with you. Uh, God's given me a lot to talk about, um, but he's kind of giving me an, an order. He's like, hey, I want you to talk about this. And I'm like, God, I just talked about that. He's like, I want you to talk about it again. Um, so I want to share this with you. And if you think you know this, you might want to stop and say, wait a minute, God's saying I need to hear it again. So listen, basically you need to increase your knowledge of him, okay? Uh, and because the church has allowed the knowledge to drop so much, we have a lot of problems all right, within the church, and then whatever problems in the church is then in your society. Okay, To what measure you meet, it's measured back to you. So uh, it's important to take note of a couple of things. First and foremost, you're never going to know it all. all right? And you know that because the Bible tells you um, that we know in part and we prophesy in part. So to sit back and say, well, I'll study until I know it all, and then I'll go and speak the word, it's not going to work. So what happens instead is that you learn and then you go speak what you've learned, right? The problem is a lot of our pastors and teachers in the church today that we have have not spent as much time there as they should have. And so they've stepped out, promoted themselves early or whatever the case may be, and they've started speaking what they know. That's great. It, it resonates with us when we hear something that we know is the Word of God. It really resonates with us. However, eventually the, the teacher, the preacher, the, uh, they come to the end of their knowledge. But that doesn't come to the end of people requesting knowledge from them. So what ends up happening is rather than staying and really spending a great deal of time learning so they can go then feed the sheep, they instead start to stretch the truth, so to speak. Okay? They say, well, this is what I know, but I need to know more, so I'll just take what I've got and stretch it out. Well, that's called lying, all right? It's what stress the truth is. So you had lies or half-truths. And this leads to confusion, right? Um, and all kinds of other problems enter into the, the uh, equation, into uh, the society and the church because the pastors have done this and teachers have done this. So I want to share a couple of different verses with you and encourage you again uh, to get into the Word. You need to understand the kingdom of God, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all else will be added unto you. There's tons of information in that. But you should start here. Every day, start seeking God, knowledge of him, to grow, okay? Pastors, you should be doing the exact same thing. In fact, uh, you should be doing it to a greater degree, I think, because you're the ones, you know, feeding everybody else. You're supposed to be there. So, this is important. A couple of verses I want to share with you. Isaiah chapter 5, and I would recommend, of course, reading the whole thing, but Isaiah chapter 5, verses 12 and 13, we'll, we'll get to, uh, yeah, we'll do the whole thing. And their banquets are accompanied by lyre and harp, by tambourine and flute, and by wine. But they do not pay attention to the deeds of the Lord, nor do they consider the work of his hands. 13, therefore my people go into exile for their lack of knowledge, and their honorable men are famished. And their multitude is parched with thirst. There's no word. That's why they're famished. And they're parched with thirst. There's no spirit. All right. Word comes before spirit. Uh, I'll show you that in Isaiah as well. But uh, the main thing to point out here is that you will go into exile. All right. Without knowledge. All right. Of him. Uh, another verse for you. Um, nine, chapter nine, verse thir uh, sixteen. For those who guide this people are leading them astray. And those who are guided by them are brought to confusion. Uh, this is very, very important. I want you to remember the word tells there are, there are people who are the blind leading the blind, right? You yourself must be blind in order to not realize the person leading you is blind. If you want a good way of checking that, simply study to show thyself approved, right? Know your word. Then when the pastor gets up and says something that doesn't line up with the word, you'll catch it because you know your word. If we start doing that as a people, we start going to church prepared beforehand, we know what we're, um, uh, the, the voice of the word, Lord because we have studied it, then when the pastor tends to something that's not right, we do it appropriately, but we can go to them after service and say, well, wait, the word says this, that doesn't make any sense, explain it to me. And maybe he shows you something you didn't understand, or maybe you show him something he didn't understand. But either way, it'll start to call upon our leaders to start to put the time in. They're not going to want to be embarrassed again. They're going to go back next week and be like, I'm going to make sure I know this material before I stand up and say anything. 
So I just want to share that with you. It's really important. God wants you to hear this again. Study to show thyself approved, okay? Uh, that's your way out. If you're looking for how do I get out of this prison I'm in, this is it, okay? Uh, seek you first, the kingdom of God, and you know the rest. God bless, take care, and I will see you in the next one.